So today I want to talk a little bit about how to use ABM not for research, right? So a lot of what we've discussed in this class has been about how to use ABMs in the context of scientific research, but ABM can be used in a lot of other contexts as well. Uh, communication, right? Trying to communicate ideas with different groups. Persuasion, to make an argument in some respects. Education, and you know, we talked a little bit about this uh, in uh, some of the previous uh, work on the history of ABM, right? Logo, after all, was created for education. Um, and decision support, and in that case, I mean kind of in a managerial, analytical kind of context, right? Uh, and this is not the only um, examples, but there's some powerful examples. Um, so let's set this context in the case of uh, a, a particular idea, which is that the problem of complex systems uh, as great as it is as a way to understand a world around us, is that they often require knowledge from multiple subject area, but also knowledge from people with multiple different backgrounds, right? So for instance, to tackle the urban planning problem, right? You need scientists who can tell you a little bit about how, um, like if you're interested in the environmental aspects, how things might damage or hurt the environment. You need policymakers who are interested in trying to figure out what an appropriate policy to implement is um, and concerned with things along those lines. You need citizens to provide input as to how the new urban plan would look. You need businesses so they can understand how uh, the, the plan will affect their particular operations. Uh, you might need city man managers, you might need emergency services like fire and rescue and, uh, am and ambulance and things like that, right? So they can understand how that's going to affect their operations, right? So you need a lot of different elements, right? And so if you're in that context, it's really hard for people to communicate, right? A firefighter doesn't necessarily speak the same language as a as a policy maker, right? Um, who might not speak the same language as an ordinary citizen who's concerned about noise violations or something like that, right? Uh, and to that extent, you need a tool that allows you to communicate with all of them in one particular way. And agent-based models can be that tool to some extent. Um, so. So an ancient-based model can serve as, an, as what Seymour Papert called an object to think with, or a f shared focal object, right? It's a particular way that we can communicate our ideas. We can work with a model implementer to help us get some ideas in there, and then we can prioritize or at, look at different aspects of them as they look, right? Uh, and this can be potentially understood and examined by all stakeholders as a communication tool. Uh, and using a name language like NetLogo facilitates this by providing a simple language uh, to understand. Um, so for instance, in the, in the urban planning case, you can imagine that we create a model called CitySim, right, that allows um, uh, a citizen to express their ideas uh, to a firefighter. Right, for instance, by showing how different agents in the model react under different contexts. Right? Um, but not only that, can that same model also be used not only for communication, but also for persuasion. persuasion right? So imagine that model has been constructed and communicated. Um, the stakeholders can now use CitySim to argue for their own policies and to argue for their own aspects of how the model should play out, the urban planning simulation should play out. Howland described this as a policy flight simulator, right? So you're able to see what the potential ramifications of particular changes to the model are, right? Um, and that's a very powerful use of agent-based model. And you can also use it to educate people, right? So imagine now, we've created our model, we validate it, we know it's pretty good. We can then take that model of urban planning, right, into a classroom to educate students about how complex systems work. And in fact, agent-based modeling has been used uh, for things in NetLogo in particular for explaining chemistry, material science, electromagnetism, evolution, and many other subjects, right? Uh, ABM enables, and there's been some good research to show this, that enables learning at a more detailed level than some other approaches because micro rules are often easier to understand than macro behaviors, right? And because we can then look at how those, once we understand those micro rules, we can then explore how they interact together to generate a macro level pattern. That encourages a generative understanding of a phenomenon at hand as opposed to merely a descriptive understanding of the macro patterns of behavior. 
Finally, if you really push that to the extent, right, you can now use Azure-based modeling as a decision support tool, right? So you could build a tool that uses the models to actually help you make decisions in very particular contexts, right? So for instance, in a recent paper that Manuel Chica and I um, have been, uh, got accepted to JMR, Journal of Marketing Research, we explored how to use Azure-based modeling to identify optimal word of mouth marketing targeting decisions, right? And so you can figure out what is the best policy I can use to incentivize my users to talk positively about a particular product or service. In this case, it was a massively multiplayer online game, right? Um, so I, I just want you to think a little bit more about how Asia-based modeling can be used beyond just solving a particular scientific research question and how it can be used for education, persuasion, decision support, um, and communication.